Hello, everyone. I'm Jesus, and welcome to the next episode of The Road to Old School MTG. So this is a follow-up video uh, in regards to my previous two videos on the budget Arnhem Geddon deck. So from based off the uh, that deck, what I what had happened was that I created a one hundred dollar old school legal deck, and it ended up being exactly one hundred dollars. And I created that deck using cards that I have, uh, so it was the exact same deck. Um, maybe the additions are different, of course, um, but theoretically, uh, you could have bought that deck for a hundred dollars. I proved it by creating the order on card kingdom and but i had the cards because or i'm getting is my main deck and i took that budget version to a local uh old school uh meetup and i played three matches a quick round robin between four players and they were not handicapped with that budget restriction they play fully powered and and i ended up going two one and the one that I lost, it was 1-1, one, one, and then third game, my opponent won, right? So it could have almost gone either way, right? So uh, very close to going 3-0, honestly. So that just proved the deck was very solid, uh, especially considering the budget restrictions. So now this is a follow-up uh, to that deck. So now what if you wanted to go a little bit above that? So I've created now another version of this deck. Um, I'm not sure if I would say it's better. At least in theory, looks better, definitely. And uh, there are some elements that I know definitely are better. Um, but some of it, it basically, until I try it out, I'm not sure. Uh, theoretically, it does look stronger, uh, actually way stronger, right? And the price difference, uh, it reflects on the price difference. So I'm just going to show you this new version, and I'll do the same thing that I did with the other one, where I will create this newer version of the budget earn I'm getting deck and take it to a local uh, meetup, old school meetup, and just play some games. And I'll let you guys know the results of that. Um, all right. So first, let me just show the original 100 card. Uh, I'm sorry, the $100 old school deck that I previously created. All right. So this is using mana stack. So this is now the... Oops, oops, my mistake, my mistake. This is the previous version. So that was a spoiler. So uh, for Argothian Pixies, four Birds, four Ernams, four Juggernauts, two Elves, two Saras, four Spitting Slugs, only Artifact main deck is Soul Ring, four City of Brass, seven Forests, four Mishras, seven Plains, four Disenchants, four Swords, three Armageddons, Balance, Regrowth, Cyborg, three of each, Aeole Pao, Black Vice, Ivory Tower, Neven Rose This, Warning Dervish. Um, so this is the deck I took. I did pretty well. The sideboard, I can't comment too much because I ended up, first of all, Neven Rose This was great. I ended up using that almost every game or against every match. Uh, and then the other ones, I just didn't feel much of a need. Um, Ivory Tower, I originally put against counter burn or just burn in general but i didn't you know it was only three games but i didn't face anybody with that right so i ended up putting some other cards but either i didn't draw them or maybe just one time so you know it's not much to make a honest opinion on right but the this i did put in and i did draw and play a few times and the few times i did definitely i got a good feeling about that one right so i can say confidently that this is good um so the um, the differences in terms of you know what I wanted to change because of inefficiency were the mainly the juggernauts and the spinning slugs. Juggernauts are just way too fragile and just uh, die too easily, right? So I, I was, it was they were constantly getting bolted. Uh, in addition to of course being disenchanted and um, swords, right? Swords you expect, um, but you, you don't expect a bolt to kill one of your heftier guys, right? Of course, your bolt will kill your weenies, right? That's what their bolts are for. But something that you have four mana in, you know, it's not the best, you know. Uh, you know, you want it to stick around for longer than that, right? Plus, it's also disenchantable or crumbled, right? So, very fragile. 
and then spinning slug is just you know it was so so you know uh, if nothing better it could stay but if there's other things that you can change maybe it could go so that's where my feeling was towards the things i wanted to change uh so now this is the version that i've created based off that feedback that i've just talked about so i added so i added black so that's the big difference now Considering I already had four City of Brasses and four Birds of Paradise, I just added one plain, uh, basic swamp in addition. Uh, but other than that, I was I felt I feel it's already the deck is naturally equipped to add black to it, or honestly a, a third color, but especially this uh, black because all the cards that you're seeing is just one black casting cost. So I just need only one city of brass, only one bird or that's lone swamp, and I can cast any of the black ones. So the only caveat, of course, is Derelors. Derelors are four four creature, and your black spells cost an additional black mana to cast. So it's uh, if I have one out already, then it'd be I would need double black to cast any of the other black spells, right? But I figured it would be rare because it's only six black cards, so it's rare for that to happen. Um, and honestly, this that could pull to black, pull off to to black man, right? So even with that um, handicap, it's not that huge, honestly, at least not in this deck. But what you get out of it, a 4-4 four, four creature that has no huge drawback, really, that at least based off this deck. Um, and it's not disenchantable. It's not crumble. It's not able susceptible to crumbles. Uh, and it cannot be bolted, or at least not unless you do two for one. So it's just, you know, I feel it's a better fit here. And then, of course, uh, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist, those are just traditionally two cards that most old school decks put in anyway. They just try to find a way to fit them in because they are just so strong. They can win games. So I added these. That was my first original idea for adding black. Just the money to remind to us. Uh, most of the success, successful old school decks, if they're not playing black, at least they splash just for these two cards. But since I was going to splash anyway, I figured also beef up the creature, the creature uh, base. So there are lords. Uh, so that's so basically I just did a swap of four Darylors for four Juggernauts. And then the spinning slugs I took out, I didn't add any other creatures, right? So I, I am dropping creatures here. I had 24. So here I now have 20. But the four things, uh, that four card slots, basically putting it mainly towards here. Two land tax and two southern libraries. So these cards are on the expensive side. So you'll see when I go to the Card Kingdom website here. Um, so the deck is a little bit over $200 as is now. Uh, so, uh, but these two cards work really well with the main game plan, which is Armageddon. So Armageddon, you basically you want to cast a lot of things that ramp up mana. So which your birds, your elves, maybe you get that soul ring. So you're able to cast things faster, but you're also able to um, have mana when after your Armageddon, right? So your Armageddon, after you drop the big creature, and now that I have their lords, so I have double the amount of big creatures that are that are likely to stick around, right? The the Juggernaut did not fit that second description. It's it's a beefy creature on the attack, but not on the defense, right? So I think their lords will do better. And I know I have faced against their lords. They are very tricky creature. Um, so I am happy with that. So land tax, uh, the way it works is, well, it's a bit of a wall of text there. But basically, during your upkeep, uh, it checks for any, if any opponent, during my upkeep, it checks if any opponent has more lands than me. And if they do, I can look through my deck for three basic lands and then put them into my hand. And that happens every upkeep. Right? If we're even on lands and play, then it doesn't happen. Uh, so this is a great way, first, number one, to just thin out the deck. Uh, less 
lands in your library, the more likely you are to 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 get you know the the other things that are important to win. Plus, that's a great way to get that loan swamp for the black if black cards if I needed to to do that, right? So I just I just need one activation, and boom, I get that swamp, and basically it opens up all the black cards for me. Um, and it's quasi card draw, of course, right? Because you are putting three cards in your deck, so you basically drew three lands, right? So you know it sends out, but you know it helps with that, especially later on if you're putting that ivory tower from the sideboard. Now, uh, Sylvan Lab, so it's, you know, it's by default um, card draw, similar to Sylvan Library. So Sylvan Library, during uh, my uh, draw step, I draw two additional cards, but I pick, but from the three cards, I pick one to draw and the other two I put on top in any order, but I can't pay four life per card to draw those as well. Right, so some, I guess the players, they draw that extra card. If I'm like up ahead, if I'm like, I cast this maybe turn one or turn two, I'm definitely paying four life, maybe an eight life, maybe even more um, to get that draw, right? Because just naturally green and white don't have draw. So these are two quasi ways of drawing cards, uh, which is, it is card draw, right? Definitely not to the same level as blue, of course. Um but it works well with the with uh, the Armageddon. So once again, because number one, the the drawback to the Sylvan Library is that you put the same two, you still pick from three cards only, right? So if you draw one, then there's two, two that you already saw. And the next turn, you'll see those same two plus one new one, right? So you're only seeing one new one per three. But if you... Combine that with land tax. Land tax, you search through your deck, get any any basic lands that you want up to three, and then you shuffle, right? And then basically that's during upkeep, and then Sylvan is during draw. So first you shuffle, you get the the cards, the basic lands from the land tax, and then that causes you to shuffle, and then that means you've now are gonna get three brand new uh, cards on top of your deck that the Sylvan library can choose from, right? So uh, brainstorm, basically, right? You're getting a free brainstorm every draw step, which is really big, especially for green and white. Uh, and the nice thing about land tax is as long as the opponent has one, at least one land over, you can do this. And you can, if you wanted to, you can even shuffle your library and not even get any lands if you wanted to. Right? So let's say you already got seven, hand, seven cards in hand. You don't want to maybe keep drawing more lands because you don't want to keep discarding. Although I would say you would still want to do that anyway, just to, you know, to shuffle out those basic lands out of the deck. So you might still want to do that anyway, honestly. But let's say you didn't want to for whatever reason. Uh, or maybe you just ran out, right? So there's five, four, six planes, and then one swamp. So that's 12 basic lands out of 22 lands in total. Uh, so let's say, right, you you played a few land basic lands just from regular play and then you do land tax two three times maybe you, you very easily could run out of basic lands in your deck as but as long as the opponent still has one more land in uh, over you at least one you can still land tax for zero and that will still cause you to look through your library and shuffle and then you still get three new cards from the seven library right so it's a lot of potential there for draw um and it forces the opponent to play lands, right? Because if you're Armageddon, but you, you're able to, um, if you have some birds or you have a big creature out and they don't, and they have no mana, they got to drop a land or do something to get mana to deal with it, right? So um, they are incentivized strongly to play lands. And then all you need is just really one time. And then boom, you get your three lands. If you want, if you can hold out, don't drop a land. And or if you're certain that player will play another land late next turn, right? Let's say they play one land and they didn't do anything, they didn't cast anything, right? So that's very likely means, well, of course, right? That meant they didn't have anything for one mana, and they need it. They need to drop another one next turn to maybe cast something that casts two, right? So 
uh, you can wait it out and try to uh, play that game and still play a land after they drop their first land and then hopefully they don't drop another. Or if you're not in any pressure, don't drop a land just to be on the safe side and then do land text again next turn, right? If still no pressure, you can do it. That's how you can very easily draw your whole uh, deck's worth of basic lands, right? So that works very well for that. And it ties very nicely with Ivory Tower uh, uh, for that as well. Um, all right, so this is the changes I've made. Um, so I was mentioning that, you know, I'm not too certain if this is maybe better, but I mean, there's definitely better elements. So including a mind tutor and a demonic tutor, that definitely makes the deck better, definitely. Adding Ivory Tower, I mean, uh, Land Tax and Sylvan Library. Uh, that's debatable. Uh, uh, just only because, you know, like it, it changes the game plan a little. And this one, you just aggressive attacking, attacking, and then you Armageddon and that's it. So now this one has, you know, like you may need to hold out more, right? So it's, it's more nuanced basically. And it's not necessarily better. It's just a different game plan. So it, um, but I do feel, I feel it is better, especially considering you're giving up four spinning slugs, which weren't that great anyway, right? So, uh, but I will be making this deck and testing it out, right? So we'll see for real. Um, but to me, it does feel better. Uh, but then the four arrows, definitely that feels better, but then you, the drawback of is harder to cast because you're just adding a, a, another color, right? The juggernauts were great because they're colorless, so very easy to cast. Let's say uh, I was facing Blood Moon that turns all non-basic lands into mountains. So I could still cast that, right? So if that happened to me with this deck, so it, it would neutralize the City of Brasses. If I didn't have, a, so I would only be able to get Black Mana for, from that one swamp and that four birds, right? So that almost halves the amount of Black Mana production I have, right? So it could be an issue. Uh, all right, so I added one Pendle Haven. I only have two Lanor Elves. Um, but honestly, even just having a Pendle Haven and then just at one Elf, let's say first turn, Pendle Haven, Lanor Elves, that's a big deal in old school. Um, so, so it just makes uh, it, first of all, it doesn't cost anything, right? Because you just took one force out. And replace it with Pendle Haven. I was considering two, but this only had two elves, so I figured not just one. Because it's a legendary land, you can only have one of it in play anyway, right? So I figured one, if I end up getting enough, what I have a Pendle Haven out, that's a nice boost. If not, it doesn't affect anything anyway, or at least usually doesn't. Um, but it's good to have that option. Uh, strip Mine is just uh, similar to. These black cards here is just the old school staple. If you can fit it, you put it in your deck usually. And but it's a, uh, I think this was like thirteen dollars. So between all these changes, the deck price, the deck price has doubled. So now let me go over that. So two hundred seventeen dollars and ninety one cents. Uh, so let's go over card by card. So I could definitely hit checkout. So you see card summary. 75 cards. So this, this is all the cards in the deck. So 60 card main deck, 15 card sideboard. So every single card, if you literally had didn't have any any cards from Magic, you can make this deck for a little bit under $220. Not counting shipping and tax, of course. All right, so uh, Aeole Pals, so that's our cyber card. I needed three in total. I was able to find one in Excellent condition and two and very good, right? So now this price here is definitely variable, right? I could probably get it even a little cheaper if I went all everything like um heavy plate, which is good. G and card kingdom, right? So I could definitely shave a bit off. Maybe it could be a little under 200, right? So, uh, but I honestly, like I didn't want to take the time to like penny pinch as much as possible um, because, you know, that's up to the, each individual player. I just wanted to prove that in the low $200 range, you can make this deck that's the next level up from this deck, right? And no, no, you can keep it like this, but it's fine. And even within $100, maybe give or take, you can make some changes because the Dare Lords are 
cheap. However, the uh, mind twist and especially that the Manic Tutor are not. So, but I could definitely see a, a case that you just added black just with the Dark Lords and that'd be fine too. Um, while keeping the this deck or you know most of this deck, um, it's possible. But for the one I the new one I just made, this is these are the cards. Um, uh, for Pixies at thirty five cents each, these are in near mints, right? Those are just cheap enough. Um, that they're you can they're abundant. Uh, one Armageddon in very good from revised. That's what third edition means, and two from the anthology set. That's just a reprint set. Um, four eighty nine and four thirty nine. One balance ninety nine cents. Um, so I got a gold border part like the regular ones were like a hundred. I mean one dollar and a few pennies. I just got this one because it was near mint, All right? So, like I said, it can vary a few dollars here and there, right? So not a big deal though. Four birds, so I still need them. Uh, excellent condition, four thirty nine each. Three black vices, forty one cents each. Fourth edition. Very good. So I think that's like light plate or like plate. Yeah, that's plate because G is heavy plate. Good. Very good is plate. Excellent is light plate. And then near mint is near mint. All right. Four city of brasses between these two, 519 each. Here it is the magnitude of $27.94. And actually, that's gone down because I've been meaning to make this video and I've been. I've made this list like three times now. That's why I want to just make this video now because you keep the prices keep on fluctuating. But this, I'm pleasantly surprised it went under 30. Before, like, I couldn't find it under 30. Even though it is G, heavy play, but still, I couldn't find it, period, under 30. So, and I just need one, right, because it's, it's restricted. So one from revised. There we go. There it 50 cents, right? So $2 you can get near mint play set, right? They're very cheap. Disenchant, so I did go down to, I think I have four. Yeah, four disenchants and four swords in this one. So I had to drop it down to three and three to fit the changes. So so yeah, there's four cards here, four cards here. That's eight. That's the, that's the between the juggernauts and the spinning slugs. But I needed two more to fit in the demonic tutor and the mind twist. So that's why I need to take a one swords one. Uh, actually, I only had three disenchants here, so I took a one swords and must have taken out something else, up, um, to make that difference. So three disenchants at twenty eight cents each, excellent condition. Um, revise, earn them same thing. They're even cheaper than their lords. Four chronicles at twenty eight cents each for excellent. So like I said, this deck is. This card list includes every single card, including the basic lands. Four near mint, fourth edition at 39 cents each. Not bad. For fours, I read tower, $1.43, and I needed three at fourth edition. Excellent condition. Okay, so land tax uh, is it's like almost like double, I think. Basically double the price if you got these from a um, whiteboard. So gold border, $15.29 each. So it's a big difference. It would this deck would probably be a good $250 with if this was white border, right? But this is cheaper here with the gold borders. Two land nowhere else, 69 cents each for near mint, fourth edition ones for two of them. Mind twist. Uh fourth edition excellent at 439. Factories. So I was able to get four um Gold, right? So now, you know, I didn't have to follow that $1 rule of, you know, $100 rule, I mean, from the previous video. So, you know, uh, honestly, I don't know if these are cheaper or more, but what this is what I found uh, in this particular search. For Mishra's Factories, 4th edition at $1.60 each. So, uh, Never Neural Sticks, uh, this $1.74 each. Very good. So, this is a play condition for three. I just needed one Pendle Haven, very good at three dollars fourteen cents. Uh, six planes, twenty cents each at good, so that's the heavy play. Like I said, you could go a couple pennies more and get four, uh, six 
and light plate, right? Excellent condition or whatever, or near mint. Um, one regrowth, $1.43, and excellent from Revise. So two Sarah Angels from Revise, different condition. Very good, 90 cents, good, which is heavy plate, 65 cents. I just couldn't find them in, in a better condition because it's, you know, they're cheap anyway, right? But right, these, the, the price, the card pool fluctuates daily. So this is what I could get in this particular for today while I was making this video. Soaring, this went a little up. I could find this a little cheaper, but now currently for a very good one in $6.64. I just need one is, is restricted. Same thing with ship mine. I, before in a previous search, they were like $10 and something, but for um plate or heavy plate, right? This is $13 for near mint though, right? But since we don't have that $100 cap anyway, you might want to spend a little bit more to get a near mint one, if that's important to you. The more I play old school, the more I feel that's not important. Uh, I just needed the one swamp, 41 cents for a very good version from fourth edition. And then these are the three swords that I needed. Uh, oh, um, so from an anthology and fourth edition, two dollars. They're all over a little bit over two dollars. Two gold bordered seven libraries. So these are also gold borders. Uh, nineteen dollars fifty four cents each. All right, so it's quite a bit also for the white border, right? So I think definitely over thirty dollars for that one as well. Um, so like I was saying, between the seven libraries, two seven libraries, and two land tax. If you if you didn't go gold border, this deck would be way definitely over two fifty. Uh, and then the three wording dervishes, there's cheap enough near mint fourth edition 30, 35 cents each. So that is the full deck, sixty card main deck, fifteen card sideboard, a little bit under two hundred twenty dollars. But as as I was saying, there's variance, right? You can definitely make this a little cheaper if you want if you go for heavy plate. And most of these, or go go border, you might shave up a few dollars here and there, or go anthologies, uh, right? So you know you gotta you gotta go through things and and find the best deals. But uh, you know if you don't want to be so nitpicky about every little thing, you know just find what's available and for the best condition that you can. While you know while being it being worth it to you, then you know you have to pick that balance right but if your main thing is let's say you're brand new to old school like i was at one time and you are hesitant to enter because uh you know old school just screams expensive and it is definitely but it doesn't necessarily have to be like like i just proved this deck here i played against decks that were thousands worth thousands of dollars and uh, I did pretty well. So now this one is just a little bit more. So $220 is still budget in old school, definitely. This was just way more extreme, $100. Like <laughs> that's uh, that's probably even budget in like in other more modern formats, right? So uh, so two, 220 that's still budget. That like you can barely get a, a dual line for, for one dual land in heavy play condition for, for this price, right? Um, unless you go C or something, right? But revise, even the cheapest ones are like basically this, right? So we are still very much in budget territory, but a little bit more. So let's say you're brand new to magic, uh, old school magic, right? Uh, you don't have any cards or ba barely any cards. You can make this deck for give or take $100. But now I pumped it up. Now you can, if you want it, you can make this deck for a little bit over 200. Uh, I will create this deck. I will, uh, and I will either speak about the results. Maybe I can record some of the games. We'll see. Um, but I, I have been uploading more play videos. Uh, my local play group is very um, welcoming to that. Um, you know, the guys are pretty cool. The store is also pretty cool. And so, they're you know whoever's willing to right so definitely don't i don't like to pressure anyone um right because it's supposed to be a fun thing right but whoever's free whoever's available and whoever's willing and happy to do it i am happy to record those matches uh 
But honestly, I am very curious about this particular version. So some hesitations I had is that before I only had one, you know, I didn't have that many other than creatures, of course. I didn't have too many permanents. Basically, um, enchantments, right? So because last, when I was playing this one, this deck, the discs were awesome. So if I was playing against a weenie deck or you know a very aggressive low low casting cost deck, uh, and I was getting overrun, I I would just cast a few things just to you know hold things back and then have my opponent commit more and more so that you know they could over surpass me. But then I would drop the disc or let's say I out they cast a big guy like a juice salmon uh. A Modi and I couldn't defend and I wasn't getting those swords or whatever. That was a great way of, of getting rid of something that I just couldn't deal with otherwise, right? So, or as a combo piece, like let's say I had a, a this and a Erno. So I would wait for the right time, whatever I thought the right time was. Maybe my opponent has low cards in hand, maybe one or two, maybe zero. And I said, okay, this is a good time to reset everything. Boom, cast it, reset everything. And then follow it up with the Erna. Uh, the nice thing is that you it costs four mana, but it comes into play tap, so you could you don't have that temptation to to use the ability the first that same turn. That's of course that's also a big drawback because they can destroy it before it untaps, right? But let's say it survives um it only costs one mana to activate. So after you do that is you should have plenty of mana to follow it up with more creatures, either more low smaller creatures or a nice Urnum, right? But now with this deck, you can follow it up with Urnums and the Relors, right? But this do destroy enchantments, right? So that's why this one maybe, you know, this that's one of the, the things that I was mentioning. Like, is this particularly better? Um, maybe that this don't fit here anymore. Or maybe this is, if I fit them in, these would be the cards that I cyborg out for them, right? Even though it's four, this is three, but of course, I'm, I'm sure I'm, usually you cyborg more than just, you know, on one particular card, right? You maybe want to do multiples, right? So uh, if I'm dealing with weenies, I may also want to put in Aeolia Pals. Um, right? So, you know, it's variable. Um, so that could be an option. Or I just, you know, just bite the bullet and have the this destroy my land tax and so library right it's there's only two of each right so it's so uh not likely you know that i would have any of them and the this right so but you know i i would think likely enough that it will happen in a few games but also a nice thing about the land tax is cost one so when cost two so i'm very likely to get value out of them even if i end up destroying them anyway right so uh, so, uh, that is a little bit of an issue. I was not afraid of killing my own creatures, honestly, because right, I know my hand, right? I know what I have, and I know I can hold off to do this. Well, I guess, you know, the same thing could be said with the enchantments, but creatures is different. You can hold off more with creatures, but this, the point of this is to give you answers, and if you're just holding it in your hand, is defeating the purpose, right? Creatures is it still could be a little different. You know, you want to attack with them, of course, right? But if you got a disc, you may be tempted to wait for the right time, right? So um honestly, this version is definitely more nuanced, way more nuanced than this one, right? So this one you basically almost always want to just cast, 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 and attack. Uh this one, um, you still want to do that, but you know, there's other interactions that can happen, and especially if you end up sideboarding the disc. There's way more things to consider, right? So, but um, I am curious about this because I personally never put in black in Ernam again in my Ernam get index. So, I play a version uh, called Bantam Ganon. At least that's the name I've seen, uh, which is basically uh, it adds blue. It adds blue for the power ancestral recall, time walk, but it adds blue for Serendipity Freaks, which is that great three mana card slot, right? So splitting selects two four land creature as opposed to uh, four three mana. 
as opposed to a 3-4 flying creature for 3 mana. And it's only one blue, so it's easier to splash. Uh, that's just a way better option at the third uh, three mana casting cost slot. Plus, blue gives you access to ancestral recall, time walk. Uh, if you if you wanted time twister, time um, brain geyser, right? So a lot of draw, a lot of blue power. Um, so that's the version I. So my Bantam getting deck that one has almost no restrictions. The only power that I'm missing is. Uh, time twister and um, black lotus. Basically, everything else I, I spare no expense for. Uh, I have a low as well, right? So you know, I spare no expense on it, other than those two cards. Uh, and even the time twister is debatable whether I would put it, but the black lotus definitely would put it if I had one. Um, but that deck is worth thousands of dollars. Um, so I've, but that was always my uh my goal of you know, adding blue for power and then adding those dibs. So I never, that's why I heart, and I still uh, could fit these two, right? Uh, these two lands, uh, I mean, black cards. But I uh, never really considered adding Darylors, right? So this is a nice test. Who knows? Maybe I might just add Darylors to that other one as well. Um, although that version, I've taken out all the black cards. I used to have the Mind Tutor and Mind Tutor. I took it out because I just felt it was not stable enough. Um, I was not getting black mana enough because my version doesn't have City of Brasses. Um, and once I took them out, at least currently doesn't, right? So once I took them out, then this just became even harder to cast. So I, like, I took those out as well. Um, so, but this would be a nice test for, first of all, to reintroduce these two black cards, which is honestly old school staples. Maybe I shouldn't have removed them. And then since I'm adding these, Derelors, I've been seeing a lot of Derelors in old school more often now than before. And they are definitely a very strong card. Of course, a notch below Jusam Jin. But honestly, just a notch. Um, it's uh, very strong, very easily easy to cast. And the drawback, if you don't, if you're just splashing for black, the drawback is very minimal. Honestly, the drawback for their lords not nearly as bad as Ernum. Ernum's the that drawback has lost me games. This Darylor, I I it would be very hard for for a Darylor to lose me a game because of its specifically because of its drawback. Um Ernum's I don't already lost games because of that drawback, right? So and just I'm just same thing. A player casts juice him, then I could someone it could follow up with um uh with a mace of if so that card actually was another one I was considering for this deck. Uh maybe even as a cyborg is a great card in general, right? But I just didn't put it. Uh but that is a good way to to stifle those bigger uh beefier cards. Um so then that's pinging you for one, pinging you for one, or even like when I cast certain dips and then my opponent drops a um, a mace of if, then I'm getting pinged for one while they're just holding up anyway, right? So definitely uh, that, and that pink one has lost me games, right? So dips and juice definitely can lose you games uh, if the opponent plays certain cards, right? So, and, you know, they get you low enough. So that's definitely a possibility. Um, but uh, considering that, you know, those cards still get played. And then, so that's why I'm thinking, so that's why I've seen Daryl Lords also being played more recently because uh, people are seeing that this drawback is not very much of a drawback, especially if you're splashing. But that 4-4 four, four body is very strong in old school. Uh, and basically they're taking up the Juggernaut slot or the um, Suchi slot for way cheaper because juggernauts are cheap pennies but suchis are very expensive because they were not reprinted um at least for old school legal purposes uh so but even this is their laws are debatable that they're better than suchis and they're cheap like you saw 50 cents so i'm um, very curious about these uh adding black to this to an earn them getting deck because I usually am used to adding blue. Right? But of course, blue costs a lot of money. Um, 
so but this demonic tutor mind twist extremely important cards you, they can win games they do win games so maybe i'm not getting that power from blue but i am getting some power i am getting definitely getting something out of it still a lot of power as well so um i am hopeful that this is a very good improvement uh based from coming off of this right so but uh i will play games like i said i will either let you guys know how i went or even maybe record some games um but this is where i'm at right now just taking this budget um uh, idea and moving a little bit further and further uh, just for those who are interested in either getting into old school magic or maybe you're already in but you don't want to particularly invest a lot to make a new deck because uh, it's so expensive to make new decks but you want something that's still fun and competitive uh, and maybe you already have some of the cards you just need a little bit more for the rest of them um so now you have those two options, right? So the original option, $100. Now you have this one that's slightly over 200 I will play games. I will let you guys know the results. Thank you for watching.